Hey guys, so I'm here with a review and swatch video for doo -doo 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 -doo. I can't do a drum roll, so I'm gonna put it in now. Mm -hmm. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush, which burst onto the scene as usual when there is a well-anticipated product. I read about this on Temptalia and I was like, what? Then I saw it on Instagram, I was like, wait a minute, what is going on? Hourglass just debuted last week. Was it last week or the week before? The week before. Late the week before. They debuted their ambient lighting blush. And of course, they're coming off the success of their ambient lighting powders. This one is Diffused Light, which is just a light mm, satin finished pale yellow shade. And um, I need to do a video on these, on how to use these on darker skin because I've been getting questions. So I'm going to prepare a video for that. So Hourglass debuted these on their website about a week and a half ago and they were sold out instantly. I tried to get them and I couldn't get them. But luckily Sephora also debuted them for VIBs and um, beauty insiders only. So you could check them out and grab them before they launched in store, which was great. So I grabbed them and I've had a week and a half to play with them. I don't like doing reviews right away. I mean, I guess I could have done a first impressions video but I wanted to do a honest review and a review that had some substance behind it like I actually tried out these products and saw how they worked so I'm gonna go into showing you the spectrum of the colors the swatches um, full-on swatches and then blended swatches on my arm but before that let's just talk quickly about the products themselves um, you can skip ahead to the actual swatches and I'll leave um, the time right here so you can check that out so first off the price these retail for $35 each which might sound a bit much but if you look at other blushes on the market and I'm gonna call out a few so you can see where hourglass kind of falls Mac blushes are $21 oh by the way the amount of product in these are 0.15 ounce which is the size of the typical blush across the board so most blushes are the same exact size you have a couple that are a little bit more product like 0.16 but they don't go like crazy much larger than these so these are average typical size blushes so comparing them across the board with other brands are kind is kind of going to give you a real feel so mac is 21 dollars for their blushes nars is 30 illamasco is 26 and then you have lancome at 30 and lancome i think is coming up on the higher higher end brands then you have Dior, which is $44. Go figure. Chanel is $45 for their blushes. Givenchy is $44 for their blushes. So as you can see, Hourglass kind of falls on the middle of the spectrum kind of price-wise. It's not quite as cheap as a drugstore, definitely. But it's not quite as cheap as, I would say, a mid-end brand like MAC. But it's not as expensive as a high-end brand, a high, high-end brand like Chanel and Dior so it's kind of middle of the ballpark and I think Hourglass is that brand that can demand that kind of price point so they're definitely priced accordingly. Next up the packaging let's go into the packaging and show you the these guys up close and personal. Let's take a look at the overall packaging it comes in a hard plastic compact with a metallic golden finish and a highly reflective surface and as you can see fingerprints show easily on this compact so it's going to be hard to keep it clean. On the back you'll see that the label has the ambient lighting blush product name as well as the shade name. It also has the manufacturing information, the net weight and size and the shelf life indicated in the corner. When you open the actual compact you'll see that there's a full size mirror in the lid and then the blush is stored and it's somewhat recessed into the actual packaging and this is going to help ensure that there is no break in or damage when you actually close the lid. Overall I think this package is very sturdy and will hold up well in travel and just regular storage. 
So where can you get these guys? You can get them on hourglass.com once they restock, of course. Sephora stores um, are going to debut them later on this month, which is in February. And then online you can get them now at Sephora for very important buyers, VIBs and BIs. But the thing is they're out of stock right now, so you have to wait until they restock or check them out in store once they launch them in store. Now, of course, let's go into the overall swatches so you can check these products out up close and personal. First, let's take an overall look at all six shades of the Ambient Lighting Blush and see how they compare to each other just in their compacts. As you can see, all six shades look very different from each other. None of them look like they would be a dupe or similar in shade to the other one. And if you also look close, you'll see that the actual Ambient Lighting Powder that is infused in the blush, that is swirled into the blush, is actually different for all six shades as well. This first shade is called Ethereal Glow and it's a cool pink blush infused with ethereal light for a moonlit luminosity. Next we have Luminous Flush which is a champagne rose blush fused with luminous light to evoke a candle lit glimmer. Then we have Mood Exposure which is a soft plum blush fused with mood light to brighten the complexion. This shade is Dim Infusion which is a subdued coral blush fused with dim light to add warmth. Next we have Diffused Heat which is a vibrant poppy blush combined with diffused light for a subtle halo effect. And then last up we have Radiant Magenta, which is a golden fuchsia blush combined with radiant light for a summer glow. First I want to show you a very heavy swatch of each shade just so you can see the actual color. But then obviously when you apply it to your skin you're going to blend it in and I'll show you the blended out versions a little bit later. We're going to start with Ethereal Glow, which is a very light pinky shade against my skin tone. It's meant to be a cool pink blush, but you can tell it's a very light finish on my skin and it would probably be best suited for a highlighter. Next we have Dim Infusion, which is a corally shade that's infused with dim light, which is meant to add warmth. And as you can see, it's a nice light coral shade on my complexion. Again, probably suitable for highlight only. Next up we have Diffused Heat, which is a vibrant poppy blush combined with diffused light which is a light yellowy shade and this is meant to give a halo effect as you can see this shows up really nicely on my skin it's kind of a light corally peachy pink with the golden infusion next we have luminous flush which is a rose blush infused with luminous light with which is a light champagne gold shade and as you can see, this is definitely comparable to Diffused Heat in that it's a pinky shade with a golden hue. Next up we have Radiant Magenta, which is meant to be a golden fuchsia blush combined with Radiant Light, which is a champagne shade. And as you can see, it comes up again like a pinky blush with a golden sheen. Next up we have Mood Exposure, which is meant to be a plum blush fused with Mood Light to brighten the complexion. To me, this is more of a subdued, darkened coral bronze shade that actually looks great against my skin tone. So now here's all six shades swatched on my arm, heavily swatched again. Once you apply this on your face and on your cheek area, you're going to blend it in so it won't look as intense. The three middle shades here, which are Diffused Heat, Luminous Flush, and Radiant Magenta. All shades look very similar when swatched on my arm. They all have a kind of rosy pink undertone with a golden sheen. And they will look very similar when actually applied to the skin. So keep that in mind. You may not need to pick up all three shades. You may just need to pick up one that you think looks best on your skin tone. The first two shades again are very light in color and may be used for highlight purposes on my skin tone or deeper. And the final shade of all six is the most natural to me on my skin tone. It looks like a very subtle, bronzy, corally shade which will look very natural against my skin tone. Again, from start, the colors are Ethereal Glow, which is that cool pink shade. You have Dim Fusion, which is a subdued coral color. 
you have diffused heat which is that poppy shade with the golden finish then you have luminous finish which is meant to be a champagne rose blush which this one is the most carly of all three of the pink shades as you can see it comes off a little bit more carl than the other three and then the last one of the pink shade radiant magenta is the pinkest of all three so you can tell from those three which one would be the best one suited for your skin and then the last one again is that that bronzy kind of subdued coral color next up I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these blushes as they would be used in real life with a blush brush against my skin and I'm actually wearing a BB cream um, over my skin so it's not just plain dry skin but it's actually over a BB cream to give you a more realistic view of how these would apply on your actual skin over foundation so first up is ethereal glow and this one is that cool pink blush the first one we swatched and as you can see it applies on my skin as a highlighter like I said so this would be great under your eyes on the tops of your cheeks or if you're going for a highlight down the bridge of your nose or on your forehead it has a cool pink undertone so if you have a pinky undertone this is probably great for a highlighter for you Next up we have Dim Infusion which again is one of the lighter shades and it is going to come off as a highlight color. And as you can see on my skin it's kind of a very very light carly shade. It gives a carl undertone but it's definitely a highlight shade. Again you can use it under your eyes along the bridge of your nose and your forehead wherever you would apply highlight. And this one is more of a warm tone color, so if you're choosing between the two, if you're warm toned, I would go with Dim Fusion, Dim Infusion, and if you are cool toned, I would go with Ethereal Glow. Next up we have Diffused Heat, which is that pinky shade with the golden sheen. And as you can see, there's a pinky glow to it on my skin. It will be great for a highlighter, topper of a blush, or you can use it very lightly as a blush as well. Then we have Luminous Flush, which is a champagne rose blush, and this one is definitely a great color as well. It comes off a little bit more champagne and kind of peachy against my skin, so it's not as pink as or diffused heat. So if you're looking for more of a champagne-y glow, this one is definitely for you. Then we have Radiant Magenta, which is Again, one of the pinky shades, but this one is a golden future shade, fuchsia shade, future golden fuchsia shade, and you can see it has a nice golden reflex, but you can definitely see the pink in that. And as you can see, it's the lightest of the pink shades, and it definitely has kind of a cool tone fuchsia pink flash to it. Next up, we have Mood Exposure, which I'm actually going to swatch on the top of my arm because I have no more space. And as you can see, this one is the natural finish that I was talking about. This one is more of a bronzy shade with a golden sheen. And this would be great for a very natural glow to the skin. So here you can see all six shades swatched on my arm. And they're not going to be highly pigmented blushes. Actually, the most pigmented, I would say, is the Radiant Magenta, which comes off really beautifully. And that's the last shade on my arm right here. And the most subtle shades would probably be Diffused Heat and Mood Exposure. I think they're all beautiful in and of themselves, and they can be used for a variety of purposes. For blush, for highlight, and just for a subtle pop of color. They definitely have a nice natural sheen to them. There's no glitter, no sparkle. It's actually just a very subtle sheen. And as you can see, there's a very subtle glow. It's not shiny or super shimmery. It's just a very kind of natural lit glow. So now that you've seen the colors, let me give you my overall thoughts. I think these blushes are phenomenal. They're a great addition to the market. They're not highly pigmented blushes that you're going to get full on color from, but they're very subtle colors on the skin. You can build up a couple of these shades like the Radiant Magenta, which is one of my favorite colors. And I'm actually wearing this one now, but you can see it's a very subtle color on the skin it gives you a very natural flush and because it's blended in with the ambient lighting powders each one of these have a different ambient powder in them so 
I have a few of the ambient powders and the blend of the ambient powders and the color blushes is phenomenal for lighting the face, giving it a nice luminous glow without being overwhelming. I think these are gonna be great for spring, they're gonna be great for summer, and if you're someone who wants to try blush but you're not into that big, overdone, bold cheek dolly look, then definitely go for these blushes. I think they're worth the hype, they're worth the, um, the price. The lighter shades, I believe, is... What was the lighter shades? The Dim Infusion and the Ethereal Glow, which are the lighter shades. I would use those as highlighters, not so much as blush, because they're very light. So they're nice highlighters. So if you want a coral highlight or you want a pinky highlight, a cool pink highlight, definitely look at those. And then... um the pinky shades like Luminous Flush, Radiant Magenta, and Diffused Heat, they're kind of similar in color, so you don't necessarily need all of those, but my favorite is the Radiant Magenta, followed up by the Luminous Flush. But I like all three of those shades. Those are just my top two out of those colors. And then Mood Exposure is a nice, subtle, neutral shade that will look great just for a different look on your face. It's not necessarily a pop of color, but it will look very natural and it will almost be like almost their color and it will look very natural and becoming on darker skin and i definitely love these colors for darker skin i think they'll work great for lighter skin as well maybe not the mood exposure so much that's more of a darker shade and um the radiant magenta will need more of a light hand which is great either way because these are very subtle shades so they're easy to blend in and blend out over your skin that's the other thing, they're really finely milled and apply beautifully on the skin. They're not as powdery, I mean, okay, they are a little powdery, so if you run a brush over them, they're gonna kick up um, powder. But that is because they're not creamy, they're like a very light texture. So um, be mindful of that, but they do apply lightly and nicely on the skin without leaving like a patchy look. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts. I definitely give these a thumbs up. Definitely check them out. Let me know your thoughts below and if you're picking up any. And until the next video, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.